Hello and welcome back and that is right today I want to talk about a nifty little upgrade via USB for your system. Today I want to talk about this. This is a tri-band Wi-Fi 7 USB adapter but crucially it's only about 20, 30 nicker. It's kind of crazy how cheap this little adapter is and the potential upgrades it could bring to your network and indeed internet connectivity there. I think it'll be fair to say that greater than gigabit internet connectivity is kind of out there. I'm not going to say it's completely global, but a lot of regions of the world are now enjoying speeds greater than a thousand megabits per second. And with that, traditional wireless connectivity and standard gigabit connectivity has resulted in local network connections actually being slower than the potential internet coming into that home or business environment. And upgrading some systems is harder than others. Now, of course, we could, if we wish, go ahead with PCIe to Wi Fi 7 upgrades this thing is about 40 45 quid it's quite high density it arrives with an external antennae there and it allows you to take advantage of wi-fi 7 and those performance benefits indeed if you are running a laptop system maybe even a mini pc system you can go ahead with tiny little m.2 upgrades not only can you upgrade a mini pc like this one to take advantage of wi-fi 7 and those bandwidth advantages but on top of that if you wish you could take a mini pc with a rather modest cpu and turn it into a functioning wi-fi 7 router those are things you can take advantage of but what if you don't want to open up your system that's where an adapter like this could prove to be very useful now one of the biggest downfalls at the moment is there aren't many big recognized and trusted brands out there rolling these out indeed during my digging, I could only really find brands that I'd never heard of that had no legacy history online promoting these. Hence why I went ahead and bought this for, again, $20 to $30. And frankly, I wasn't exactly bowled over with the presentation. We have the unit itself. It arrived in a tiny little plastic bag with nothing on it. It arrived in its plastic shell. It arrived with a box that had several different errors on the back and front. And finally, it arrived with some very questionable instructions. Again, not a huge surprise when we look at AliExpress products. But when I connected this to my Windows 10 PC, uh, Windows 11 PC, and I connected this to my Unify setup with a Wi-Fi 7 uh, AP there, the Pro uh, Wi-Fi 7 AP that you plug in there, this gave me 2.8 gigabits per second transmission. Now, why was that? Why is Wi-Fi 7 able to give me even better performance than some of those USB to 2.5 gigabit ethernet adapters? Well, a large part of that, and again, we've talked about this in a much larger video that hopefully the thumbnails on screen where we talked about should you give an F about Wi-Fi 7, comes down to two factors, two mainline factors indeed. Number one, frequency control. Wi-Fi 7 opens up the 6 gigahertz frequency band. Most Wi-Fi adapters up to that point will give you access to 2.4 gigahertz and 2.4 uh, gigahertz and 5 gigahertz there. And some you get tri-band adapters that give you two 5 gigahertz connections. This on the other hand is tri-band giving you 2.4, 5 and 6 gigahertz frequency control. But it doesn't stop there. Wi-Fi 7 also allows you to open up larger bandwidth connections per device. Up until recently with Wi-Fi 7, most devices had to take advantage of 80 megahertz up to 160 megahertz individual connections. Wi-Fi 7, on the other hand, allows you to take advantage of 320 megahertz packet connections, but moreover, thanks to something called MLO, MLO, multi-link operation, you can actually take advantage of multiple connections at once kind of not dissimilar to something like SMB multi-channel, but a completely different caveman um, terminology, MLO allows you to not only have connection via that 320 megahertz bandwidth connection, but you can stack them, taking advantage of wasted space on the stream. Now, performance was super hard to measure. Measuring it against an internet service provider, sure, I could get gigabit internet connectivity, but I don't have 2.8 gigabit internet. And if you do, mozzled off. I was able to connect this via the local area network via the wireless AP7 there, the Unify AP, and connect a 10 GBE NAS, in this case, the Ugreen DXP480T. And when I was looking at Atto and looking at 
that crystal disc, I was able to get between 210 and 268 megabytes per second transmission. Now keep in mind, that was write transmission. My read transmission was awful. I wasn't really able to identify quite why that was, whether that was to do with the AP there in the middle, whether it was to do with the NAS, or whether it was to do with the adapter. But nevertheless, I was able to at least ascertain that I was able to saturate a great deal of that 2.8 gigabits per second wireless connection there. So it all sounds good. You're thinking to yourself, great, well, I'm gonna go spend myself 20, 30 dollars. I could take advantage of, you know, just over a quarter of what 10 gigabit networks will give me and wireless. Hold your horses there, Trigger. We've got a few things to discuss. Number one, the six gigahertz spectrum, like the five gigahertz spectrum before it, works at its best in small proximity. And the further you get away from it, the less that connection holds up and you'll move from six gigahertz into five gigahertz into 2.4 gigahertz in terms of actual coverage, but the actual bandwidth afforded you on the 20, 40, 80, 160 and 320 megahertz bandwidth connections will dumb down in how many you can access and actual the height of those. The result is that this can only really hit those high performance numbers in very close proximity a kind of proximity where a LAN cable may already have been there. Secondly, it comes down to, does your system actually allow for wireless upgrades over USB? Now, a number of you watching this are gonna wonder about support of network attached storage devices and an adapter like this. And I'm sad to say that the only th the system I could find that will allow me to interface with, th with this in any way was when I was using an Unraid system there, largely down to Unraid allowing for multiple different drivers on their systems there, even though there was a driver Driver included here. Now, again, lots of users online, we've talked about some really entrepreneurial users over on GitHub, will no doubt come out with ways to make this usable. But right now, when I tested it on a Synology that already has very patchy support of USB uh, NIC upgrades there, there was absolutely nothing. And on a QNAP there, nothing still. I even went into the hardware configuration, which generally has a lot more tinkering power on a QNAP than uh, the majority of turnkey NAS solutions. And even then, I wasn't able to take advantage of this. And of course, the other question, if you don't currently have Wi-Fi 7 in your network environment, should you care about upgrading to Wi-Fi 7 right now? Well, kind of. Let's face it, if you were going to upgrade the wireless capabilities of your host system, again, whether it is a USB or using the M.2 or a PCIe upgrade we talked about earlier on, in terms of future-proofing, you've got absolutely nothing to lose. The power consumption is a great deal more efficient, and again, you're opening up multiple bands when the time comes. One thing worth touching on, though, the 6 gigahertz band and the wideness of that frequency is still yet to be unlocked. Too much of the 6 gigahertz spectrum uh, frequency uh, is just really locked out right now, and they're only gradually opening up different frequencies, which are already being used by the military, already being used by emergency services and others. So keep in mind that you may have a Wi-Fi 7 route right now, and you can upgrade your client devices very affordably now to Wi-Fi 7. But just keep in mind that a lot of that band is still locked out. And again, there's only a finite number of, for example, 320 megahertz connections you can have due to their sheer width. So don't think that if you've got 10 devices now all upgraded to Wi-Fi 7, that they're all gonna enjoy 1.2, 1.4, and 2.8, and even greater connections if they've got more bands to play with there. But just keep in mind, um, antennae and bands to play with, just keep in mind that there's only a finite amount of frequency and band to play with in the first place. Another thing you may have noticed is this device being listed as BE6500. That's because it claims to be able to handle a full bandwidth across all channels of 6.5 gigabits per second. Some of the other USB to Wi-Fi 7 adapters I've seen at 5.8 gigabits per second and Wi-Fi 7, that multi-handling of individual data connections on the frequency there at 160, 320 megahertz and more, again, does sort of give credence to that but as this is a two antennae tri-band adapter, I'm struggling to see how, unless I was dealing with a particularly open frequency with none of the locked out frequency channels, I just don't think most users, at least in the next decade, are gonna enjoy 6.5 gigabits per second as straightforwardly as this adapter seems to claim.
Of course, if you are someone that's already taken advantage of a tri-band router, then perhaps it will be possible. But again, I wasn't able to fully test tri-band connectivity across the 2.4, 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz frequency all at once on open channels. Bottom line, for 2030 Nicker, it's really hard to fault something like this. I kind of wish we saw more established brands roll out alternatives to this that feel a little bit more rugged. I will be doing a complete strip down of this for the article below, but I didn't want to do that until we'd finished a lot of our testing on this. But right now, I like what I see, but I've got to keep in mind that there is a reason it costs what it does. Now, right now, if you're already using a Wi-Fi 6 or 6E setup and your router isn't Wi-Fi 7, don't waste your money, it's just not worth it. Again, if we do find out some uh, some of the chaps over on GitHub, some of the ones that we've highlighted here on the channel before, are able to roll out some NAS adapters for this, I'll get it linked in the description, and perhaps a follow-up video where we get this working on some NAS systems. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it. There's a link in the description to get hold of one of these for yourself, which obviously is affiliated, which allows me and Eddie to keep doing what we do here. So, if you found the video helpful, and if you're gonna shop at those stores anyway, make sure those two things are true, please use those links to help us keep the lights on but don't worry if you don't want to do so apart from that thank you so much for watching go to the article in the description for the internal photos of this as soon as it's live and i'll see you next time